Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Osayua Mesali, and today, <laughs> an odd combination for a Monday. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Dami. Hi. <laughs> very, very odd. I know, right. <laughs> so I'm behind the scene gist. Right. Well, hey, how have you been? How was your weekend? I love your hair, by the way. Looks very oh. clean and nice. Thank you. <laughs> How was the weekend? Well, my weekend was quite eventful, but yeah, I survived it. It was mm. good, basically. I saw a lot of singing. Say, quiet, madam. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mary? How was your weekend? I don't think I had any. Oh, really? I worked on Saturday, so and I had to open on Sunday. Well, yeah. Wow. I had some me time as well on Sunday. Mm. That's how Nice. I had I had the long weekend as well. Like literally, there was no weekend for me because I was working yeah. up until this morning. You read? My sister. The Lord is with me. <laughs> yeah, chasing money. There's no sleep. <laughs> All right. So today we have an interesting conversation. Um, because again, we've been holding up the conversation to have uh, um, the guests join us. Um, but before that, um, in conjunction with enough is enough, we're discussing the NTARS movement, as you already know. Um, that's the hashtag five for five demands, right? I think was that was that all took last week. Okay, so um, yeah, it says so. Um, the answers widened the scope from ending police brutality to advocating for reforms and higher compensations for police officers. Um, the birth, um, this birth rather the phrase that says Sorosuke. As young Nigerians were urged to speak up for their rights and against police brutality, some notable figures and celebrities called for a street protest on social media on October 7, 2020. An initial three day protest was scheduled and embarked on by youth in Lagos State. All right. So, um, the first major gathering took place at Ikeja. The turnout of celebrities and crowd amplified the NSAS message with the protests along the Lekki Epe Express. Citizens from other states and celebrities from various industries joined the demonstration with the 5 for 5 demands. Immediate release of all arrested protesters. Okay, so the 5 for 5 demands are the immediate release for all arrested protesters, mm -hmm. justice for all diseased victims of police brutality, and appropriate compensation for families, set up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all police misconduct, conduct psychological evaluation and retraining of all disbanded SAS officers before their redeployment. Mm -hmm. and the fifth one would be increase police officers' salaries and adequately compensate them for protecting the lives and properties of citizens. Of citizens. And the government's response on October 11, 2020, the federal government announced the disbandment of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, across Nigeria. On October 12, 2020, the president addressed citizens via a televised speech. The IGP convened a stakeholders forum of civil society organization leaders and other acti activists, and the demands were accepted. On October 13, 2020, a new unit called Special Weapons and Tactics Team, SWAT, was set up to replace SARS. It was met with the more resistance. It was met with more resistance and the protests continued. Continued after all. It was like just changing uniforms. Mm -hmm. So our five demands, you know, on the 11th of October, 2020 were... Um, the immediate release of all arrested protesters, justice for all diseased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families, setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all reports of police uh, misconduct within 10 years, and in line with the new police act, psychological evaluation and retaining uh, retraining rather to be confirmed by the independent body of all disbanded SARS officers before they can be redeployed. And the fifth one was increase police salary so that they are adequately compensated for protecting lives and properties. Um, so this is 
I mean, the week, I mean, we're in October. This is the week that all that protest was going on. And it's important that um, people not forget the, the core of it. I think somebody is taking a story today in line with, you know, police issue. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, with all of those things, is birthing a reform in our police sector. You can't have people that have guns and not, you know, not have the right pers persons holding the guns. Yeah. Right, so I mean, in case you want to learn more about your elected officials, um, learn more about your governors, your senators, your House of Rep members, the State House of Assembly members, or local government chairmen and councillors, you can just chat hello to 01700-6381. That's the chat box for the Office of the Citizen. And this, all, I mean, this segment is always powered by enough is enough. All right, so I mean, Certificate conversation, that's what we're having today. And here's what we found as today's quote. President Tinubu's certificate saga and the issues surrounding it is a huge embarrassment that definitely rubs off on national integrity. This is from Chief Festus Oguche. Now, last week, Thursday, on our ladies' night, we had discussed the Tinubu certificate saga. We were asked um, if Nigerians should focus on this or just move on. However, the controversy surrounding the release of academic records of President Bola Tinubu to the presidential uh, candidate of the People Dem uh, People's Democratic Party, that's Atiku Abubakar, by the Chicago State University, has continued to elicit diverse reactions from eminent Nigerians and other stakeholders who express concerns about the implications of the revelations on the image of the country. So today we'll be discussing this particular certificate saga and we're asking what are its implications on democracy now you're still watching ways world post day is celebrated each year on october 9th to commemorate the creation of the universal postal union that's upu in 1980 i'm sorry in 1874 it's a day to recognize the crucial role that post offices play in connecting communities and in 2023, the theme is Together for Trust, Collaborating for a Safe and Connected Future. Very interesting, Dale. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, you know, it's so interesting that we still have post um, cards and all of those things because the advent of social media, the advent of the Internet, mobile phones, and all of that, you think that some, but some people are really that traditional. You know, I remember my grandfather used to make me write letters, you know, write letters. I, yeah. still, I still have birthday cards from, like, Handwritten letters. Yeah. I have my birthday cards from, like, um, maybe less than 16 or so. Like, when I was in boarding school and then friends, because, I mean, that was the only way we could do anything. So they'll, you know, get a card and write a note in it. And oh. It really does mean a lot I to love, me. I love notes, handwritten notes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they're so thoughtful and beautiful. It's, it's composed from your heart. It's not something that you just picked up from the internet and you just, no. Um, it's just cute. Okay, well, <laughs> on that note, let me start with you, Dami. What did you find for us? Okay, um, technically it's good news. So, um, the court sentenced police officer Daram B. Vandy to death by hanging. Um, so, I think it's good news because this police officer, uh, officer rather, it was a happy, I don't know, it was just, what's the call of the police? Trigger happy. Trigger happy, yeah, it was a trigger happy policeman who shot a woman on Christmas Day last year. The and lawyer. Yeah. I mean, imagine someone just going, minding her own business, and then, God forbid, bad thing. You just get shot. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm just very happy that he was actually, you know, persecuted. Because usually, what we hear is, I remember one time, I went home, and my dad was telling me that somewhere very close to our house, a police officer actually shot a bus driver. And he died. And my dad was like, just a few months after then, he saw the police officer walking there in that same place again. So I'm like, what kind of country is this where pe some certain people are above the law? Mm -hmm. Because I believe that when you kill someone, you should be killed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's how the law is. Right? So why then, because the person is a police officer or probably knows one person or, or probably the person is even something, and then they can just shoot somebody and then just go, why? But if a regular person just steals yam, you would prescribe a person and say the person stole the whole Nigeria. So I'm just very happy that this particular story has a happy ending. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's, it's safe to I say it has a happy uh, ending. Well, like, but, well, you will call it closure, yeah. at least for the family, because again, it's one thing 
for people to fight for justice. It's another thing for them, for, to for, for them to get it. And the truth is, this particular case, right, I think what really, really, you know, made it a bit, um, um, what's it called, was the fact that it went viral. Yes. Made it a bit more, um, like, the actions were taken was because... But then, is this the first you, police case that has gone viral? If you, are, if, if you want to look at it critically, it's not, this is not the first police brutality case that has gone viral. I'm not even, we've seen many and heard so many cases where, I mean, when everybody knew about what was happening and they still did nothing to them. So this particular one, I don't know, I don't know, the, I don't know what makes it um, peculiar, but I'm just happy that justice was... And like you rightly said, mm. it's one thing to actually be fighting for justice. Uh, it's another thing to even sense. get the justice. So I'm very glad. And yes, truly, it's closure for the family. I'm, I'm really, really glad. Yeah, that. and our heart still goes out to the family. Just Needless death. All right, so um, your story, quickly. I don't know if they can pull up the video, but... The singer Simi, Nax, Skate Makers, Ash Musi, Nons Miraj, and others over their depiction of African moms. So basically, there's a video, I think they're going to play, of, I mean, the usual jokes they usually make of how yeah, African moms are. And I think that they went a bit too far. Okay. Ex except, except, far. except your mom is uh, even the even if your mom is local, I don't think she local. Would show. Your, like your you are depicting <laughs> that they have no common sense. In my opinion, I think they were just depicting how their mothers are. Ah. Oh no, because my mom is not like that. Yeah. I don't think I've met any mom that is like that. Yeah, so when I saw your story, I went to leave a comment there. Let them not come for me. But the truth is that I feel like it is the kind of mothers that they are exposed to and the kind of mothers that they've, they've been around. Because if... Uh, come on. It doesn't make any sense. I get it that you want to do some of these kids to go viral, but yeah. depicting your mother in that... I mean, Very Taoma, dramatic. for instance, you know, she will tell you that some of her skits is, is like, you know, just watching her mom, her mom. and all of that. Yeah, so she might do it, but you you will see that she's not doing it in an in an extreme yeah. manner that makes people start to wonder: yes. Is your mom like this? <laughs> the same thing with um, Chris Clown, always yeah. slapping Adi. I am sure his father is not always slapping him, but that is you know they've been able to translate that in a way that it is not attacking the person of who their parents are. But for you to do this kind of thing, I mean, it's uh, I don't know. I think I agree with Simi. And that thing, Simi is sensitive. You know, she says she's a mother now. And she's a posh Simi mother. Is very touchy. <laughs> and she, and, and Simi, has a, Simi has a mom too. And I've met her mom. Her mom is very cultured, very, I mean, you know, so. No, it, 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 yeah, was just, like, it was just. It was just. I mean, parking It was too much. much. I think the highest they would do is. Ah. That's what they do here, but yeah. not that they will start packing the place. That's when the mother was now dusting her leg on the... Uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Job gone so, wrong. I'm going to do something. I'm going to invite all your moms. Let's go have dinner. They will film it. <laughs> I mean... I will, so, not, will not tell so, them this is how mothers are. That's actually what it is. It's really sad though. All right, so my story from a uh, president of um, Nigeria, Chief Olushe Gomba-Sanja, has explained why multiculturalism was designed for mankind by God, saying it must be cherished, jealously guarded and sustained by people. He gave his explanation when he was given a keynote speech at the World Cultural Fest Festival in the U.S. Um, he said that um, he explained that these traits should be sustained, right, when it comes to diversity and multiculturalism because of human imperfection, greed, selfishness and dishonesty, war, violence, insecurity, poverty, criminality, and evil in one form or the other. Um, so he says some would want to blame this diversity for multiculturalism and using these points to, um, and using th these to point out the failures of multiculturalism. And he's saying that that's not supposed to be so. It's supposed to be like a strength for us, you know, um, that if he said, he said that to have gathered about 180 countries is to acknowledge and celebrate the diversity which God, which is of God. God is is a God of diversity and uh, not uh, um, sameness. I like this idea because again, every time I look at Nigeria, it says if God had created sameness in the world, it would have been a world of monotony. Um, stillness, on excitement, dullness, boredom. Mm -hmm. God created a world of diversity and wonder for us to enjoy and live happily in it. 
you know, so we must sacrifice uh, love, kindness, goodwill, brotherhood, sisterhood, mercy, forgiveness, consideration for others, and love, um, and love and the fear, and fear with respect for our Creator. Like he said so many things, but I, I feel like sometimes when we talk about Nigeria and the fact that we are a multicultural nation, uh, yeah, multi-tribal or whatever, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a strength for us. But I just on, I don't I still don't understand why every time, especially when it comes to political seasons, you know, we always bring that card of where are you from, where are you this, where are you that, you know, our strength. Because if we were all alike, if we all thought the same, this world would truly be boring, right? The reason we have a diverse team, the one that is thinking left, the one that is thinking right, the one that is thinking up, the one that is thinking down, is for when the eventual end product comes, it comes out very rich, you know. But every time when it comes to diversity, tribalism starts to play out and all of those things, people start to bring out where you're coming from and all of that. I think let's start to embrace the originality of what multiculturalism, you know, and our diversity, the strength that it wields, and, you know, and, you know, I'm sure that by the time we understand that strength, we'll be able to, you know, fly further. All right, we'll take a break now. We want to bring in David Udeng to discuss um, the certificate saga. Stay with us. We'll be right back.